So just to give you a heads up, uh, we're going to mainly talk about the uh, TR310 or TR530, our pan tilt and zoom, zoom type of camera. So this is going to be good in a situation where you use it either at school or you can even use it at home. So right now for me, I'm in a room that is about 10 by 16. So there's, there's a couple of different ways you're going to be able to use this. And it's really simple to use. I'll show you the, the simple and I'll show you the semi-advanced versions as well. So we won't go too far into it. So we'll try to keep it pretty easy. Um, well, let's go ahead and get started. And as I said that it should only be about 30 minutes. My name is Chuck Tuck and I have Aiden Sinclair joining me today. And if you have any questions during the presentation, just go ahead and type those in in the chat room and Aiden will try to answer those or at least field those questions. And if, because there's not a whole lot of us, if for some reason you wanna speak up, just say, I wanna talk and I'll unmute you so you can go ahead and talk to everybody if that's gonna be a little bit easier for you. So, all right, I am just going to start off by doing a quick little PowerPoint presentation. I know sometimes we just don't like those, but bear with me on this one. So let me share my screen here. And let's go ahead and start the slideshow. As I said, this one is really about the remote hybrid classroom setup. And this is using one of couple or one of several different cameras that we have. This one is gonna be really pertaining to the TR310 and the TR530 line of cameras. As you see that we do say that it is uh, really good for distance learning and it is a fantastic tracking camera. You will have a couple different modes uh, on the TR310 and you have up to three different modes of tracking on the TR530. So the TR310 has a 10 times optical zoom and the 530 actually has a 30 times optical zoom. So uh, optical zoom is really, really good and you'll see that in just a little bit. As it says down at the bottom, the, uh, it's really good for distance learning and your TR310 connects via USB and it also has an HDMI output, whereas the TR530 has just the HDMI output, but there are HDMI to USB converters. So you could connect it to virtually any computer that you want. Um, and again, the TR310 has a two times, or excuse me, two different types of auto tracking, whereas the 530 will have three types of auto tracking. And one of the biggest reasons between those two cameras is that the TR530 has what we call like a panorama or wide, uh, wide view uh, camera on there. It actually has two lenses, so two cameras. So down at the base, I don't know if you see my pointer, this is actually a lens down here as well, a camera lens. So this does your wide area, and then you have your tracking up here. So this will track and zoom in and zoom out. Whereas on your TR310, you don't have that second camera down at the bottom. You just have the one camera and that will pan, tilt, and zoom and track you automatically. So another difference between the two is we have something called a POE. So that's power over ethernet. So that is going to be on the TR310. And you have a three year warranty there with the uh, TR310. So how do we set these things up? Again, like I said, it's a really simple setup. You do have options of either mounting it on your uh, ceiling, uh, on the back wall. Now, if you're mounting it on a ceiling situation, the TR530, you will not want to mount that on the ceiling. The reason being is, remember I said that there's a second camera. Well, that second camera, if you mount it on the ceiling, everything and everybody's gonna be upside down. So that's a situation where you can mount it on a back wall or something like that. Or if there's gonna be something where the cameras are gonna be shared or you're gonna be moving them from one area to the next, uh, you can use a tripod. So the best situation with the tripod is if you try to get the camera at about six foot high. So once you do that, uh, it should be no problem. It should be really good. I've actually, I've had it at four feet, but it's kind of, too low, so you really want to be at about six feet. As I mentioned, it connects via the USB. So the USB is actually what allows it to work through, uh, as an example, Zoom. You do have the HDMI connection on the TR310, which allows you to put that out to like a second monitor. So you can kind of 
view what you're what you're doing or what you're seeing on a larger screen. Neither one of these cameras, these professional cameras for the classroom, uh, have a built-in microphone. Uh, the reason being is because the distance, you don't know what you're going to be at. You know, you could be 20, 30, 40, 50 feet away. So if you have a microphone there, it's not going to pick up that well. But you do have a microphone input jack. So you can uh, connect a microphone to it. As an example, if you already have uh, microphones in the classroom, a, a microphone setup or a wireless speaker system setup, you could connect that uh, to the cameras. Uh, most folks will probably just use a USB microphone of some sort uh, through their laptop or desktop. Also, uh, these cameras, you don't need to use software or they don't have software. I'll explain that in just a little bit. So I did mention about the auto tracking. So as an example, just the different types of auto tracking that you have. Uh, you have a, a choice between like a panoramic or a wide tracking on the TR310 with the, the wide angle camera. You also have a situation where on both cameras, if you're walking on the stage, the camera will track, it'll pan and follow you and it'll tilt up and down. And both cameras have what we call zone tracking or zone modes. And you can have up to four different zones. So I'll talk about that in just a second here. So again, people tracking. It's just going to follow you. So the difference between the TR530 and the TR310 is on the TR310, it'll track your body. So you have like a half body and a full body tracking. So it'll just automatically start tracking you. You don't have to set anything up. As an example, if it was turned on and I walked into the room, it'll lock onto me right away and then it'll begin tracking me. Now, if somebody else walks into the room, you can use your remote control. It's gonna be small here. On the remote control, there's actually a button here that says uh, switch. So you just, it switches users. So if you're using the online, for the lack of term, calling it software, I'll just call it a software, uh, it'll be a red box and a blue box. So when you see a second or third person walk in, there's gonna be another box there. If you want to begin tracking that person, you just hit switch. So this is the little bit more advanced version of doing stuff. But like I said, I'll show you how to do a little bit of that in a live demo, and then also a very basic, but very, very good and simple way of doing all this. Here's that zone tracking that I was talking about that's uh, on both of these cameras. And zone tracking is a situation where you preset up to four different zones or areas that you want the camera to, to zoom into. So how that works is you preset these areas and when I walk into an area, it'll track my body and it'll say, oh, Chuck has now gone over to zone number two and zone number two might be an interactive flat panel. So what's really the difference here is if I have it on standard tracking, it's gonna be a much wider you know, so you may not be able to see the interactive flat panel or your uh, poster or your uh, dry erase board or anything like that. So in zone, you can zoom that in so it's a little bit tighter. So it's focusing more on that object or that subject. So all you have to do is make sure that there's a little bit of overlap. And then when I walk into that second zone, it'll track me there. I know it all sounds pretty confusing. We do have some videos on how to do this and how to set things up. So uh, be sure to go to our website to take a look at all those. I kind of mentioned that this really is not a software based, uh, neither one of these cameras are, but there is software and it's free and it's the Easy Live software. The Easy Live software allows you to do your annotations, you could do your live streaming, you can record, but just as an example, I am using Zoom and Zoom allows you to record. So I am recording. So again, it's really simple. You don't have to use any software. Now for those IT folks uh, or schools who may purchase oh, a dozen or up to say 128 of these cameras, the PTZ management, uh, Again, I'll call it software, but it's all uh, web-based. Now that one is Windows-based. It'll allow you to control up to 128 cameras, as long as everybody's on the same network. 
So then that one IT person or that one control center could control and update all the firmware to the cameras. They could turn on all the cameras. They could preset. They could do whatever they want. So again, it'll make it very, very easy for teachers in the classroom if you're going to be using this in a classroom situation. So here are just various reasons on why you may want to consider, not why, why you will consider uh, an AVER camera. Uh, the auto tracking is very good. Uh, one of the biggest things is you don't have to have a lanyard. You know, oftentimes we've heard about tracking cameras from other manufacturers, but you have to have, oh, a lanyard and you've got to wear it and then it tracks around. And then if somebody else is coming in, you have to hand it off to the next person. You don't have to do that with ours. Uh, some of the other things is the powerful zoom, the auto zoom, the optical zoom. You can also have up to 256 presets set up. Now, just to clarify that, that's if you're using the on-screen control, you could set up 256. If you're just going to use it as a basic camera, uh, you can have up to nine presets, which oftentimes it's plenty, especially if it's just going to be a, a couple of different teachers using it. So uh, I think we'll probably make all this available to you. So I won't bore you with this and read through everything. So if you are not following us on social media, please follow us. We release a lot of different information on a regular basis. So please, like I said, visit our everusa.com slash education site. You'll be able to find videos on how to set up the cameras and things like that. You have little training videos, helpful tips and things. Facebook, if you're on Facebook, if you're not following us, follow us there. Same with Twitter and please on LinkedIn as well. Okay, so let me stop sharing this and bring us right back here. Uh, do we have anything for questions coming up here? Uh, let's see. What is it? Uh, let's see. For classroom settings, do you have a recommended mic? Um, good question. I I guess I could say if, if this is working good for you and if it sounds good, this is a product by a company called Anchor, A-N-K-E-R. So it's like a five by five puck. And this is what I'm using. So in a second, you hear me from across the room. Like I said, it's 16 feet over to the other end. So, and I'm just talking in a normal tone. So this, I've got several different Anchor products and they've always been good for me. I don't want to push the a specific brand, but you could pretty much use any of them. Uh, but Anchor is one that I have been comfortable with. Okay. All right, so let's give this a go and let's see what's gonna happen. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the, uh, hold on, we got a question here. When it follows the teacher, will it only focus on her or will it focus on students? It will only, it'll only follow and focus on the teacher. So good question there. However, you will see the students depending on um, the height of the desk and things like that. But it'll capture it, but it won't follow the students. So as an example, if I'm walking across the room this way and a student walks across the path and goes that way, it won't go like this and try to follow the, uh, the student. So especially on the TR310, it works really well. It just sticks with you like glue and goes that way. That's where I was talking where if you wanted it to follow the student and they walked into the path, you can hit the switch button and it'll follow that student or that, that person. Good question. Thank you. So what I'm going to share with you right now is the semi-advanced mode. I'm just going to go through showing you what it looks like. And how you access this is you can do it on uh, Windows or on uh, a Mac. You'll just want to be in a like a Chrome browser. And then you'll, in the URL area, you're going to type in the IP address of the camera. I won't go into showing how to do that because I don't want to confuse you. But this is just to show you what it looks like. So let me go ahead and try to switch over to that. So I'm going to share my screen and let's see, let's hope, let's hope. Uh, forgive me for a second here. I must make one little change. Okay.
Any other questions coming up? No? Okay. Here we are. So hopefully you can see that. This is me right here. I'm just using the webcam. And the other camera that you see is the... I'm currently using the TR310, and that's just, of course, focus over there. And you see my hand. It is a live image. So as an operator, the controller or the teacher, again, this is going to be something you don't have to use. But this is what you'll see. You notice you have your, on the left-hand side, live view, camera setting. This is where you could go in and you can adjust your full auto. So I typically try to leave it on full auto. That just means that I don't have to fuss with the contrast and brightness and things like that. But you see that you could go in here and you can actually change all that stuff if you want to. Uh, same thing, image process. You have AWB is just average white balance. So there's a lot of different things in here. You could change the saturation and things like that. But again, personally, I tend to leave it on the full auto. Now, on your remote control, you do have options to uh, have a backlight. So that just means if there's a lot of light behind you and you just can't see your face, you just push the backlight control button and it'll um, up the brightness and it'll kind of try to dim the, the background or try to compensate for it. Uh, there is another button on there that says EV plus and minus, and that'll just brighten up uh, or dim the entire room. So you do have different options. So if I come over to video, you see my priority mode, 2160 for like a uh, 4K, but these cameras are not 4K. 1080p, you have your power frequency. So again, all this stuff, don't worry about this. We're just kind of showing you what this looks like. Now, you do have the option of streaming at the same time that you're doing this live. Um, sounds kind of redundant or funny. You might be on Zoom, but you might say, you know what? I have a YouTube channel or I have a Facebook page and I want to stream live. You can do that right here. You see where it says video mode, USB only, or you could go to stream only, or you could go to USB and stream. So you do have some options. So if you're a little bit more of an advanced user, you know uh, about the uh, network here where it says server URL and stream key that's where you're going to input the information so you can stream live on to like I said Facebook or YouTube or something like that. Let me just jump back here again to video audio. So if you're like I said semi-advanced or just wanting to play around with this stuff you see where it says stream video output and bit rates and things like that. As an example if there's a lot of uh, traffic on your network and for some reason you're going, gosh, it's just not streaming very good or people on the other end are saying it's jittery, you could come in here and you could control this. You have your 512 uh, kilobits per second, one megabytes, two. We recommend that you really want to try to, try to stay at two megabits uh, per second. You don't want to go down to the 512 because it, it will not look very good at all. Uh, if at worst, you know, you go down to one, but try to keep it at two. But again, this is all just stuff that I want to show you just so you're aware that this is here. Um, let's drop down to tracking setting. So this is where we're going to go if we want to set up our zones. As I mentioned, you see six, the number six, seven, eight, and nine. Those are reserved for your zone tracking. So wherever it is that you decide that you want that camera to point, you go to number six, and then you hit save. Notice up here in this right corner, you press save, and then you go to number seven, then you find another zone, you press save. And that's how you do that. Now you do have your tracking sensitivity and the time to return to a tracking point. What that means is as an example, an earlier teacher, somebody was asking, well, will it just track me? Or, you know, what if there's a whole bunch of people in the way? That's when you may want to set the tracking to number three. So it'll stay with you better if there's going to be a lot of people and a lot of movement. Now, the time to return to the tracking point is say that number six is my, my home or my zone. 
Uh, and if it loses track of me, or if I leave the room or something like that, right now, it's after six seconds, it's going to go back to that home or number six preset, which I designated as my home. After six seconds, it'll go back over there if it loses track of me or if I just, you know, walk completely out of the zones. You can go anywhere from three up to 10 seconds. Okay. Presenter mode, that's just the standard tracking where it'll track you. And again, I'm going to show you how the tracking stuff works. Now, system, this is just going to show you what your IP address is, your serial number of your camera, and things like that. So, all right. Now, one last thing before I switch over and show you a, a live demonstration of this. And what I'm going to do, uh, let's see here. On this live view, now, if I'm using my on-screen uh, controlling, you see I have preset. I have all these banks of 19, except it goes up to 256. And then to the far right area, it says tracking control. If I'm going to use the zone tracking, the only way to use zone tracking is if I am using the IP address, and if I am logged in here and controlling it, I have to set it up from here and turn on and off the zone tracking from here. If you're only going to use the remote control and if you're not going to be online, you only have your uh, standard tracking. It's, it's bad for me really to say standard tracking because it's great tracking and you'll see that it's really, could be all that you're really going to need. So I just wanted to let you know that this is where it's going to be. So, okay. So let me stop sharing this and fingers crossed that this is going to work. I'm just going to jump right over to uh, sharing. Let's see here. We've got the screen. One moment here. I want to make sure that everything's going to be set up for you guys. In fact, what I'm going to do to make it uh, really clear to all of us uh, how this is going to work is I am going to shut down the on-screen control. So this example that I'm going to give you is really going to be a teacher that comes into the room, the camera is already there, and all you do, hit the button to power it on, you turn it on, and this is exactly what you're going to see. So let me go ahead and cancel out of the on-screen. So I've I've closed that out. And come back to my Zoom. All right, so I am going to the TR310. This is the camera that I am currently using. So again, that's over there. Now, as a teacher, let me get up. So here you're gonna, the person that asked about the uh, microphone, again, this is the anchor that I'm using. So. Uh, you'll be able to tell if it's good or not for you folks. So here I am as the instructor. I'm talking about today's assignment, what we're going to be doing. I have my remote control if I want. And maybe I'm going to be walking over here. First, I have to make sure that I turn on my tracking. So with the remote control, I do have control over turning it on and off. So it's, it is on. So let's see if I'm going to do my calisthenics. There we go. Follows me down. I go up, we do our morning exercises, getting all the students ready to go. So now we're all happy and we're feeling good. So I'm going to turn off my tracking. And now I'm going to use some presets that I already have set up. So I'm going to turn this off. So I'm going to hit number one. That's going to be me right here as an instructor. Now I'm talking to you saying today's assignment, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about economics and a little bit of math. So we're going to find out how much it costs for a family to go shopping at a grocery store. So I press my next preset. So it's going to come to my ad that I have up here. So I can begin talking about my vegetables and the cost. But Michael, well, let's see. How about can I zoom in a little bit more? Absolutely. You have your zoom control. So let me zoom in just a little bit more here. So now you can see where I've got my organic fruit here. I've got my nectarines and peaches at $2.99 a pound. So let's take three pounds. And then we have 
four for five dollars on romaine or lettuce head. So I want two heads of lettuce. So what's that going to be? Now I can press my preset number one again, come out here, and then I can follow up and do some more instructions for the kids. Now I want to go to my next preset area. So I might hit my next preset. So it's going to come down over to my workstation area. Uh, light's really bright because I got a bright light up there. So now I'm talking to the students and then we're talking saying, so the next assignment, I want you to get on your computer and this is what we're going to take a look at. So now I hit my next and then I could begin talking about whatever it is that's down here. So again, if I didn't have that super bright light just shining, you'd be able to see it or it depends on the angle. So one of the coolest things about this is you have to realize I just showed you several different places, one, two, three, four different places, but it's only one camera. So this is really great. And again, when you're just using the remote control, you can have up to nine presets and go all over the place. Now, when I'm ready, all I have to do is hit my tracking on again, and it'll begin following me. And you notice with the tracking, what it tries to do is it tries to keep you centered at all times. You see it's starting to zoom out. It's trying to get my half body there. And if I move this way, it'll follow me around. If I move this way, it'll follow me around. If I go out further, it'll still continue to follow me. If I had a larger room, I could go way out over here. You notice it kind of comes back and it tries to keep you centered at all times. Go back over this way. And if I was to sit down, it's always gonna slowly come down. So let's come back over here and let's come back and switch cameras again. Go back to my webcam here. See if we have any questions. But that mode, that is basically, I've just connected that up to my laptop and I fired up Zoom and used my remote control. I turned it on and I just hit on for tracking and it just follows you everywhere. So you do have control over the speed too. You can make it go faster for your pan, tilt, zoom to follow you, or you can go slower. Let's see. Some free bird. <laughs> yes, I can. Um, see if we have any other questions I don't see anything else coming up here from you folks I just want to make sure that you guys really know that it's it's a very very good camera again whether you're in a classroom or even even at home again I mean this could be your kitchen or whatever it might be your dining room uh, that you're teaching from the cameras the quality hopefully you saw that it's really good and that you notice that it does follow you and track you and it does a good job. Um, so the thing right now with this distance learning, of course, whether you're going to be in the home or in class and students are, are at home, you're going to need something that's going to be good. You're going to need something that's not distracting to the students and you're going to need something that's not going to be uh, distracting to you as the instructor. And what I mean by that is, something where you have to constantly come back and you have to change something or you have to reset things. With that one single camera, you saw how I was able to go from one area of the room to the next. I was able to set up presets and zones. I could zoom in on certain things. So a lot of different things. So again, depends on how and where you have things set up. If I wanted to have my teacher podium or desk here set up like this, and this might be one of my presets, it just zooms in right here to the worksheet, you can do that. So, uh, okay, so uh, no, the 310 does not have a 360 degree uh, rotation uh, for the presets. I believe it was up to, I think it was 270. So it's not a situation where you could put it in the middle of the classroom and it'll rotate uh, all around. Good question. And with preset zones, it, you want to have it uh, in synchronous order, you want to have one, two, three, four. Actually, on the presets on the zones, it's six, seven, eight, and nine. So you can't go six, seven, eight, nine. You can't do that. 
So, and the only reason you can't is you have to have a slight overlap on the zones and that way it knows, the camera knows when your body crosses from one zone to the next. Hopefully that made sense. Uh, yes, yes, there is. There is a, there is a, a tally light. So on the camera itself, um, the orange colored light is that it's off. Blue color is the camera is on. So that way you'll know that it is on. Good question on that. Any other questions? You know, there's all there's a few of us. So what I'm going to do is just for these last few minutes, I'm going to click on everybody allowed to talk. And so you have your own choice of unmuting yourself. Um, and if you have a question where you want to speak up, go ahead and hit unmute and talk to us. Give us your thoughts on the camera or if you have questions or if you have any questions or thoughts on document cameras. Don't be shy, Mike. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to just cut to the chase. How much does this cost? <laughs> oh, I should have prefaced all this at the very beginning and said, I'm sorry, we won't have any pricing because Aiden and I both are not in sales. Okay. So you end up having to go to uh like a, one of your resellers, whoever it is for your school district and find out. So sorry about that, Mike. All right. Well, thank you very much, folks. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. Yeah. Greatly enjoyed it. Appreciate it. Thanks. So long. Um,